Welcome to Barbell Logic Rewind. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast, everybody. Got 71 people here. Exactly 71. Definitely 71. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, can you guys get a really ugly Barbell Logic shirt this week yet? <laughs> Did kidding. you notice what the what the back of the shirt says? What does it say? Weaponized <laughs> Scottism. Definitely. 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 <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely weaponized Scottism. So we got Brett with us tonight. He's drinking a Dr. Pepper and, uh, well, we're just going to catch up with him. It's been a while. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. You had a big meet since then or a couple and since we were When was there, the last time I was at on? At least, I mean, you competed a couple weeks ago. Two, yeah. So I competed last, so, yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago. So I did well. well. So welcome back to the show. Glad you're here. Hey, thanks for having me. You were we going to talk about what we're drinking? Sure. What are I'm, we drinking? What, is, drinking? what is your whiskey of the night? 2018 Diet Dr. Pepper. It's a good vintage. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's a good year. DDP. So, <laughs> Brett, what is going on in the world of manliness? The world of manliness? Yeah. You, you have your thumb on it. I have my thumb on the roll. Yeah. Okay. It's different in your finger, right? When you have your thumb on it, you control it. <laughs> you can. Tr- I mean, same, same things going on as always. I mean, we're still producing content of the art of manliness. Um, We've got the strenuous life going on, and that's been doing great. I think I've talked about a bit it last time yep. we were on. It's been good. We just closed another, what do you call them? Do you call them a flight? What do you call we them? We call them enrollments. Enrollment. So we had 600 guys sign up for that one, and uh, it's going good. Yeah? Yeah. Good community growth? You feel like the No, yeah. What's been feedback's really, been pretty good. You know, the feedback's been really great. What's been great to see is, so we have a way, we encourage people to get together in person and do meetups, and we've been, we've had hundreds of them around the world going on. So there's meetup, there's places, cohorts in different states, all the states, pretty much England, got one in Belgium. So it's great. These guys are getting together. That's what we're trying to do is like foster like community, get people to do stuff actually together instead of just sure. scrolling, their, Insta- their, computer scrolling their Instagram feed yeah. and yeah. feeling like, how did I get here? That was your whole idea, right? To get that was the whole idea. Do it in the, in the get world. people to actually do stuff and in, interact with the physical world. And that's yeah. happening. So it's great. Give the room just a real quick synopsis of what the strenuous life is. We had this idea a long time ago, basically like do Boy Scouts for men, right? Because like there's all this stuff you want to do, but you're like, how do I get started? It would just be nice to like tell me like, this is what you want to do if you want to get started on learning about X skill. And so we decided to do that. So we got 50 different badges around 50 different skills. There's things like outdoor stuff, camping, wilderness survival. There's marksmanship. But we also have like soft skills like public speaking, right. cooking, style. We t- we've, we've taken all the content we've been producing on the art of manliness for 10 years and structured it right, right in a way. So you actually can do the stuff we've been writing about. So, so we like, I don't just write stuff so people just read about it and like, Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. And then sure. share it. I want them to actually do it. Yeah, so this is what we're doing. One. And it's so, actual items. and then we have like weekly challenges that they have to do. And then they have to check in and make sure they've done 60 minutes of physical activity. We don't say what it needs to be. We let, leave that open to you. Pedestrianism. For it example. could be pedestrianism. <laughs> right. Where you, <laughs> You Very want. physical. Um, no, but, but a lot of guys are, it's funny, a lot of guys are doing barbell training. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a barbell badge, and you helped me mm-hmm. um, with the requirements on that one. Yeah, with sort of the metrics. That, put that thing together. So they have to do all the main lifts with, uh, so all the like the deadlifts, press, bench, squat with good form. And then they do the Olympic lifts as well, because it mm-hmm. adds a bit of technicality. You bet. And then you have to meet certain benchmarks, which is based on body weight. So if you yeah. need to be able to deadlift, I forgot what it was. I think we did 1.7. Yeah, 1.7, and then like and squat then, a certain amount. And then, like, you, then we did that with the Olympic lifts as well. We tried to pick something that was in an area that most guys could right. accomplish. Right. It's not, and if you were really overweight, like it would always also encourage the guys to lose, <clears throat> right. to lose weight. And there's a lot of guys who are doing that. They don't need to be 150, but if they're 320, right. it's going to be hard to hit those body weight 1. numbers. 1.7. Yeah, right. right. It's a big, I mean, yep. you know. It's, and it's been cool getting the feedback for, from guys saying that, you know, they're losing weight, they're more engaged with their family, they're doing stuff that they said they would do for years, and they're finally doing it. So it's it's been great. It's been fantastic. Good. I love that you don't mess around. Like, you do these things. You don't, you're not just sitting in the closet <laughs> typing <laughs> these things up. You really want these people I want, to do I want this. You It's to a do mission. It, like, it's a mission. Yeah, do, do stuff. That's how, you, like, it's what I was talking about last night, right? Like, the way you increase happiness and by happiness i don't mean like you're giddy and like it's not not the fleeting not the fleeting. it's like it's flourishing right like a sense of satisfaction right and meaning and you don't do that when you're just inside your head all the time looking at instagram reading stuff doing netflix like you get that by interacting and bumping up against the outside world we call it friction right when you 
you rub up against something. That's how you find out who you really are is when you have to rub up something that's not you, yep. right? And as you increase in skill and capacity, like we were talking about, it feels good. Yeah, It feels really good. And what we hope it does is like people don't stop there. They'll go from there and do other stuff as well. So it's sort of, we're trying to create a virtuous cycle, right? Where you, you have these small wins, which will allow you to get to bigger wins later yeah. on. Yeah, that's good. We've meshed well over the years I think because ultimately we see the big picture, we kind of see the forest through the trees. And while you're attacking it from this sort of very general lifestyle, manly lens, which, which really came out of, spurned out of like your college years, right? Yeah. That's kind of when Art of Manliness started. And it was in law school, right? right. That, does that count as college? They don't count college. I don't know. Yeah, it's post-grad. Okay. Well, obviously. It makes it sound cooler. Okay. That's fair. It's true. All right. Okay. That's fine. And, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things we, we've tried to do, we, I was talking about this earlier out, out in the uh, lobby, there are a lot of fitness podcasts, strength podcasts, like podcasts in this sort of world. We must crush them. Well, <laughs> I'd love to crush them. That's true. <laughs> but I think one of the reasons that this one has resonated well is because we're able to take the thing that we do in the weight room and apply it to the bigger picture of life. No, it's the doo-doo jokes. It's the doo-doo jokes? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mark Bell can't do that. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> and yeah, and so you're trying to do the same thing. And so what I like about Art of Manliness is that you call men to something greater, right? Yeah, that's what we're there, trying to do. There are right. a lot of 30, 35-year-old, you know, what we call boys who can shave. Right. Like they're, they're in men's bodies. They're grown males. But they're, they're not, not men. They're not men. Yeah. yeah. And so you're trying to call these guys. And I like that your, your article is sort of span the the spectrum you've got some really deep thinking articles for sure kind right. of deeper levels of knowledge one of the things i like about your practical articles is that they're actually legitimately practical right like right. even stuff like your style articles are one of the first things Step i remember one yeah Step it's not two. like style the style though is not you know how to buy a twenty five hundred dollar suit right 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 it's like we're gonna dress in a way that's that's both like frugal and you look good like how to buy the Two hundred fifty dollars suit and still look good in it, and right. look like a twenty five hundred dollars right. suit. No, that or whatever. And so, uh, get, yeah, that's the, the get a tailor. That's what you need to tailor all your clothing. Take it, so take cheap. it to yeah. It's like ten dollars, ten dollars, maybe twelve dollars. Yeah, that's what I paid. 10 and bucks. you can buy sh any shirt at JC, like a Stafford shirt at JC Penney's. Spend twelve bucks, and it's going to look fantastic. Look, yeah, like it's cheap. One hundred dollars yeah. on it. Yep. So I have to take issue with Stafford shirts for JC Penney's looking fantastic. What if you tailor it? You got to tailor it. They look all right. Do you go to tailors? Yes. What are you are wearing right now? What kind of... Well, see, I'm, I'm still cheap. So this is the Roundtree in New York shirt from Dillard's. From Dillard's. Okay. Right. I'm a Stafford guy. Yeah. So if we're I... We're just going to have to agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is an M. Taylor shirt, which I then had to take to an actual tailor. Right. You know, there's that, there's a brand M. Right. Taylor and they're right. like, ah, you use this app and we take pictures. Like I'm, I'm walking around like turning circles, like half naked in my basement. For real. Does it even work for your, your body no, type? No, it was terrible. Right. And then I got these shirts. And I was like, that's not going right. to work. And then I just took the shirts and took them to a tailor, paid $10, and then emailed them. But they did refund the tailored money. There we go. They were like, okay. well, they refunded all that stuff. So, yeah, that's good. No, it's been very practical. So, so wait a minute. minute. You put your phone on. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, you okay. take a picture of yourself. I don't want to do I've a commercial them. for these guys because they suck. Well, no, you're going to. Well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So essentially what you do is there's an app on your phone that you, you put your phone, you actually put it down on the floor up against the wall, <laughs> up at an angle. Right. And then you walk back until you fill up the whole Cause that's where you window. look best. Right? This is and you have to do it. You do it in your underwear. Right. So, I mean, obviously I was like in a thong. That's what and so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so and actually I don't ever wear, I don't even own underwear. So I actually right. put Rachel's thong on. Right. And then I was turning. <laughs> so then, not, not true. I was in boxer briefs. And then you hold your hands up like this and you turn 360 Don't degrees shoot, right? really, really slow. This is the future. Except it didn't and, work. Yeah, and it didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> right, so, yeah. yeah. This um, is George Jetson yeah. stuff. So the shirts weren't bad. I did get a jacket from them. I got a blazer. <laughs> it's the weirdest it's the weirdest fit ever. I mean, there's, there's no way to salvage it. I had to email right. and be like, either need my what? money back or you got to do this again. What it's if they fit better. right, but you've never worn anything that fit That's properly not true. before? Come on, you know me. Yeah, you're pretty weird. I mean, you know, oh, that's uncomfortable. Listen, and you're like, oh, I got to have my Lulu this. And I got that stretchy panel there. And, you know, I do like the stretchy panel. Right. <laughs> Just like shirts Why made out of cotton. jeans come with the stretchy panel? Well, they do. Like, you know, if you get the, like the Chuck Norris ones out of the back of the, oh, yeah. the Kung Fu magazine with that. That's right. right. The you know, Rex Quando. The, the gusset. <laughs> that's good. 
Hey, why don't you tell us what you talked about? And so what did you talk about? Give us a little synopsis of what you talked about. So the whole thing, uh, you know, with the art of manliness, we do a lot of history and explore history and what we can learn from it. And one of the things I've learned, learning about history and studying it is that like the same problems that we have today, like our great grandpa, our great, great grandpas, like they had to, um, specifically like the turn of the 20th century, like late 19th, early 20th century. I I love that time period because it's just basically the world we live in today, like got started then, yep. right? That's when mass production happened, mass <laughs> communication, professional sports started, entertainment industry, it all got started there. And so during this time period, you had all these advances in technology happening and like people started reporting like increases of anxiety, depression, suicide went up, talked about how narcotic use like went out the roof during this time, heroin, like opioids, they were using it back then to sort of soothe this like, cause the world was just whizzing by them so fast. Sure. Right. And it was just exhausting and they became more sedentary and things like that. And, uh, so like some of the solutions that doctors at the time had were very similar to some of the solutions you hear today about if you're feeling stressed or fatigued or whatever, it's like, just take it easy. Don't work too hard. It's bad to exercise or lift heavy. Cause that's freakish. You don't want to no, do that. Right. But then there was another group of people, uh, sort of the early physical culture. Like this is the time period where like bodybuilding, weightlifting, got its start. So like Eugene Sandow, um, Bernard McFadden, these guys started saying, no, what you need to do is start lifting heavy and get getting strong. And so, yeah, they, they said to do that. And it helps like when you get physically stronger, like it does something to you psychologically, yeah. mentally, spiritually, whatever you want to say, where you just start feeling better. Yeah. Right. And the whole idea I was arguing is like, um, there's this quote Nietzsche said, joy is the feeling of power increasing. And by power, he's meaning just capacity to act sure. in the world. Yeah. And so I mean, how you, the linear progression, like it feels good when you hit PRs yeah. every workout, because you can see <laughs> in a very quantitative way, your capacity to act increasing. Yep. And, you know, I was talking about how if you're starting strength coach and you see an elderly client who can, you know, finally lift, you know, squat with just an empty bar, right? That's 45 pounds. And that's a big thing for them. Yep. I mean, I mean, what, what was like the look? I mean, I mean, I'm sure you saw the look on their face when they did that. What did it look like? What you can see is every time they're able to accomplish a goal, this thing changes in their brain, right? And they're right. able to go like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that thing. Right. Most of them, when they start, they're like, I can't, I can't do it. Or I can't do this thing. So here, here's the thing I want to push on you a little bit now that you're in a giant room sure. full of people. You're a pretty private guy, right? Yeah. So... You, yes, yes, you I am. <laughs> talk a lot about the thing that strength training does for humans, the strength thing strength training does for <clears throat> the room, for people, for men. How has your life changed over the last several years in getting strong? Because you've always kind of been geared towards this manly lifestyle and called this something <laughs> greater. Well, I mean, but I mean, that's your business. Right. Right. And so well, I'm just saying, like, you weren't, <laughs> you're not a little like gamma male, like, and then you're like, you sounds like a velociraptor. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is that um, what you were? No, yeah. no. I mean, you were already, no, a, I was already, I mean, I, guy. I like to barbell train even before I started. Sure. But I mean, in the past few years, it's cool to look back on the milestones I've hit in my training and say, you know, man, I, I did that. Right. And you can look back and when you're having a hard time somewhere else in your life and say, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't do it. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I can, I have the capacity to dig deep and, and pull and, it off and hook grip and, and now, no, <laughs> not gonna hook <laughs> never going to hook. I, I've been trying it in my warm ups, and it's, I don't like it. So I'm not going to do it. Nobody that. likes it. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like your kid's like, I don't want to get grounded. I don't want my phone taken away. Right. I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. What kid wants their phone taken away? He okay, just calls you dumb. I'll that's remember what, that next time. I mean, Thanks right? coach. Okay. So okay. have you noticed a change no, yeah, for sure. in you, in the very things that you said? Right, like, no. Obviously you've changed physically, right. by the no. way, meaty, meaty hamstrings. This guy could be a hamstring model. I don't know what that means. Not exactly sure what the market is for hamstring models, but he squats in shorty shorts. Do. And uh, I get to see life, those. Uh, I get to see those four times a week. Right, you do. And uh, I feel like we've really we've bonded. bonded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not only that, you've sent me shorty shorts, and I now I wear your it, shorty yeah. shorts. You got the shorty shorts. Listen, if you haven't converted to the shorty shorts, you got to go shorty shorts. Everybody, Seriously. every guy in the room squats. You should be wearing shorty shorts. The ladies appreciate the shorty shorts. Like it's amazing. So like our, when you sign up for the strenuous <laughs> life, you get a uniform, like a PT yeah. uniform, and they get the shorty shorts. And ranger, we've ranger got, panties. we've got, they're, they're not, not quite ranger, that they're short. not ranger panties. They're yeah. not yeah. that short. Hill's got some ranger panties. Right. And that guy, those are, them's a short. 
But anyways, I've got <laughs> crease of the butt cheeks coming out. I've, uh, learning about that. I've had guys <laughs> say my wife really appreciates the shorty shorts. Yeah, like ladies want to see the leg. They don't want to, you know, no. do it, guys. Yeah. And Brett and like cornered the market on those, I think, for, I, for a time, right? For, yeah, for like, so the company we use is Sophie, 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 whatever, whatever. The they, Sophie's, uh, right? We, Sophie, yeah. Sophie. So we, we bought, like, we became like one of their top civilian consumers of their shorts. Do you and, know how many pairs of those shorts have gone out? Like, if you had to guess, I mean, I just like probably, well, we've had 3,000 okay to the TSL members. <laughs> then on our, just like the art of manliness, like the ones I'm wearing here. Behind Scott, oh, yeah. right there. Right. I don't know how many we sold. You know, a couple thousand of those. But like, That's what I've got. There. We ran them out, and they've had to rejigger their production for this year to take into account all those shorty shorts That's we're buying awesome. from them. So, by the way, when I got these shorts, Brett was like, "Hey, what size shorts are you? What are you like an XL?" And I was like, mm, "Send me the mediums." mediums. <laughs> <laughs> I did, didn't I? You, you remember did? that? Yeah. I wear the mediums. You're looking good, man. Only way to go. When you go to Lulu, what size? What are the? What, what size? Do the don't you look around? I've converted you to the short no, the, shorts. No, they wear the thir- the Lulu shorts come in a waist size. Wear like a no, but they also have an inseam, right? And oh. you shouldn't be purchasing shorts longer than a seven inch inseam. That's true. That's the longest inseam you should wear if you're a dude for some, shorty shorts. Some style advice here. Yeah, right. I mean, look who else? Unless, unless you're from? Kirk from Matt Reynolds from a 285 pound SSC. bloated red powerlifter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> so what are we then we talked about like what were we talking we went talking we were like, how, went how, from Nietzsche to well, shorty we're shorts. About how, your life, how your life has changed my life yeah it's training. just it's yeah you just you're a bit more resilient are you a bit more resilient yeah no okay. I am more resilient okay right yes yes I would say so we use I statements on this show yeah let's come oh, okay. on <laughs> I'm so- you gotta, you gotta be vulnerable, and you okay. gotta get choked up at least I, once during, okay. during the episode. Okay, I've never seen you cry, by the way. You haven't? No, I've seen I, Rick you know, cry. The last times. time I, I cried like so hard. Okay, I'm gonna get vulnerable here. Okay, after my, I, we, my family, <laughs> we went and saw Coco. Oh God! Oh gosh! Like, <laughs> oh man! In the movie, I just started. I started crying in the movie. If you haven't seen it, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just. And then when I get home, like I had to go down at the garage and I just, I just bawled my eyes afterwards, out. afterwards, after, after I got home, like this thing is so sad. It's just like people get forgotten. Oh, that's just, man. that's just so sad. Like the little guy, like there's this guy, like you see you die, you go to the underworld. So wait, why did you go to the garage? Is it because you're embarrassed? That's where the, that's where the plates are. No, I don't know why I went down there. I had to go down there for something. I had to get something. <laughs> and just like, and just I just had a place. moment. Started this. Remember me. <laughs> but like, so here's how it works. If you this, like you go, you die, and you go to the underworld, and you turn to a skeleton. But as soon as someone on Earth, like living, forgets about you, you disappear. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> and just that idea it's is dark. just it's like cartoon for kids. Oh my gosh, it's just so sad. And I'm like, I, I can't. So mm-hmm. I just, that night, I was like telling Gus the stories about my grandpa. Like, <laughs> don't forget, <laughs> don't, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> so yeah, that was. I mean, I my, my wife thought it was. I mean, she cried, but then she's like, "That's pretty weird that that was the thing that got you." But yeah, people uh, getting forgotten. His <laughs> first five minutes of up. You seen? The, I've seen up. I uh, that didn't that didn't do it for me. Gosh, I don't I don't just know. So Becca's upset over there. Right look at her. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. First uh, five minutes of up. Oh, you know the one other one I cried. I got teary eyed was the one about the neurotransmitters in your brain. Right. What is where, it? What is the inside, inside out? out. Inside yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that. The, I saw that. Where the the imaginary friend got forgotten. <laughs> it's just, it's just so, wrecked you. It just wrecked me. It's just, so apparently legacy is very important to Brett. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. It is. It's psychoanalyzed over so, here by the So have you printed the entire Art of Millionless website on like acid-free paper? It, put it leather bound. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I should. Yeah, I should. you actually should. I, so on that topic of legacy, one of my favorite things that I've seen you go through the last couple of years is the way your strength training has affected your son. Yeah. It's been really, really cool. Yeah. No, yeah. Gus um, Gus loves, you know, I have the garage gym, so my kids are always down there, and they're seeing me train, and I get their commentary from them. They they call it whenever I have, like, a hard, like, set of squats or deadlift, and, like, I'm, my face is all red. It's tomato face. Yeah. It's like, that's got tomato face. <laughs> um, and then I always give the report to Gus about how my training went. Yep. And, you know, so, f- and how old's Gus? He's seven. Yeah. So he's still a little one. For right. Sure. Right. He comes to all your meets. Comes to all the meets. When, when you, when you do the meets, it's a thing that you and Gus do. Yep. That's what you we do. Gus. And he's obsessed. Like we, we stay at the Comfort Inn. He thinks it's the greatest hotel 
<laughs> in the world <laughs> because they, of the waffles because right? they got waffles in the shape of texas yeah, that's yes. awesome <laughs> um and i agree <laughs> it's pretty cool um and i love waffles it's been so like so this last meet it was it was a great teaching experience it was so now i'm gonna cry I know, gonna so now, I'm, I'm gonna lose it. On so I, I hit the PR on squat, and we went to press. And for some reason, going up, my press was just struggling. Yeah, struggle a little bit going struggling into the meet, meet with your press. And um, because I pee, I did 205 at the first one, and then I couldn't even do like I failed 201, I think, on my second attempt. <clears throat> yep. And then the third attempt, I came in, got 201, and I locked it out. And then I was bringing it down. And I think just bad habits training, because like what I usually do when I rack it, I just like do it, and I just. Throw it in the rack. Throw it in the rack. You just put 201 over there. Right, only yeah. it's not a standing <laughs> squat rack. Right. And so I, I did ER that. Rack. And I got on the left and I missed it on the right. And like my wrist, like it fell down this way. And I bent my, I sprained my wrist really, really bad. It, it was a pretty bad miss. So you, it like, was, it was really, t- your second, it was so funny. Where it was like, it, what the hell well, just happened? I mean, you'd missed your second attempt. And I was nervous because I was like, oh no, he's going to go one for three. You missed your second attempt on what appeared to be a strength issue. Right. Not really a form breakdown, right? So right. one of the things we're always watching at the meets, you know, you're always really encouraging as a coach. You're like, you're fine. You right. just misgrooved it. Get it back a little bit more. Yeah, man, but that was, deep down oh, that was side, awesome. You got it. You're fine. Like, you know, no, no, and I was no, like, no. Oh, shit, Brent's going to, Brent's going to go, Brett's going to go one for three. I was like, he, it, the form was okay. And so, uh, and so really, I, I remember I came up to you and said, okay, here's the deal, dude. You just got to get really get angry. angry. I don't know what angry. it is. I don't, I don't know what you got to think about. We're going to forget you if you don't hit this. That's right. That's right. That, would, that would just make me sad. And I would cry oh, I say. a lot. My oxytocin would go out the right. roof. Okay. So you hit this perfect press. It grind, 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 locks it out. And I'm like, yes, I'm so excited. You bring it down, put the bar back in the rack, and miss <laughs> one of the J-hooks. And it just, your wrist cocks weird, right. and the thing drops, and you catch it yeah. goofy, and it's all super awkward. And the crap, you know, and the second you did it, I was like, man. And so you got red lights, which got red light. you should have gotten it because yeah, you didn't no, get yeah. it back in the didn't get it back in the rack. Now Gus was just upset. Gus like, struggled. He was crying. Yeah, it totally hurt. He took it really bad. And uh, he's like, Dad, you <laughs> failed. <laughs> and, and, I'll never forget. Right. Yeah, you failed. <laughs> and uh he's like, I'm just he even he said he says, I'm so disappointed, Dad. And I was like, Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> and um <laughs> And he was also worried because I was hurt. Yeah. All right. He's worried that I wasn't gonna be able to deadlift. And I was like, no, look, it's all right. It hurts really bad. Uh, we'll put some dirt we'll on put it. Put some dirt on it. And, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And so we'll get back at it. It's like it's okay. You know, you have these setbacks. And it was really nice. I was on this. I was on the bench. You know, in like the the training area where they they hold you. And I was just had this talk with him. It's all right. You know, and we're gonna be. Right. We'll get over this. You have these setbacks, and yeah. you just got to bounce back. And so yeah, I went back in. I had a wrap. Put wraps around my wrist for the deadlift. I uh, just like compress things a lot. So I just didn't feel anything yep. anymore. And went in there and I, I pulled the PR. So you were in the hallway, you know, just before they, they're making the platform ready. We're in the hallway and they're like, bars loaded for Brett McKay. The little nose to work. And Matt goes, whack oh, yeah. on the back. And, and <laughs> Gus was like, <gasps> yeah, my dad. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 man. He's just getting fired okay. up. It's good. It's what we do. It's all right. right. You're like, yeah, Gus. And he's like, yeah, okay. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was, gonna kill me. yeah, so when I hit the PR, Gus is really excited. He was yeah. pumped to, to yeah. see that. So it's been great. I, I've been, and, and I'm looking forward to the next one. This is a cool tradition that we have together. What's so awesome about it is that Gus gets to look at his dad right. and see his dad do that. And not just that, right? He's been able to do that and watch you at every meet you've done. He hasn't had to see you overcome adversity really until this right. meet. And so, man, it's a, it's a good, good lesson good. for him. Well, I, I want to, can we go on a tangent here? Sure. Please people who've affected you in your life and they don't even know it. I had football coaches that did the same for me. One in particular, my lineman coach, and he just had a big impact, just not only on the field, but outside as well. And I just, I'm going to write him a letter. What's his name? Ham, uh, coach Chamley. Chamley? Chamley. 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 Edmund. And Edmund and yeah. Edmund North. Um, and I wrote him a letter and just say, this is what happened because of you. Yeah. And I think if you have someone like that in your life, like it's a teacher or a coach or somebody, like do that, like find their address and write them a letter, especially like teachers, right? Because like teachers, you don't know if a teacher is a success. Thankless job. Right. Until like 10, 15, 20 years later. And so let them know that, no, what you did was worth it. Like it helped me. I've been trying to do that slowly, track down my mentors and write them just a letter and just like, here's how my life is now. And you had a part in that. Yeah. What did he do? What was it that set him apart 
for you? Um, so, you know, on the field, just pushing you, but like outside the field, like he would bring all the linemen into his home and we'd have parties and just like pizza and you got to see him interact with his family. So you got to see that aspect of what it means to be a good man, a good husband, a good father. And, and just outside too, he would you know, catch me in the halls and he would just say encouraging things, right? It was about, not even about football. It was just about, it could have yeah. been about student council yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You just cared. And I even like, I had another football coach, the head coach, Kyle Heath. He was really like the football coach in Friday Night Lights, right? Like he really cared. He didn't just see it about your, your coaching these guys to win football games. It was like, no, I'm trying to turn these boys into men. Sure. And so part of that is he would, every year, he would sit down with every player, bring them off an interview. And it's like, what's, what are your goals for this year? And you'd say like, oh, I want to start. It's like, no, no. Like besides that, like what are your outside goals of right. outside of football? And he would kind of give you some, like, you know, some advice, like, here's what you need to do. And that was really encouraging to me. And I, I you know, like, they're teachers. They don't get paid that much. They don't have to do that. They sure. could have just phoned it in, but they did that. And it meant, meant a lot. Do you think that had an impact on what you've done in your career choice in, later in life? Or just did it kind of subconsciously? I think subconsciously, made, made right? Like, yeah. the, the, I had this, I just had a lot of great, you know, mentors, particularly male mentors, just in those really formative years, you know, men at church as well. You know, one of my high school teachers is one of the reasons I went to law school because he was, he went, he was a lawyer before he became a public school teacher. He's and, one of the reasons I didn't take the bar. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, he, he said, yeah, you should do that. Go. Cause like no one in my family is an attorney. I was the first one that went to law school. Yeah. And it was because of him. He had a lot, a huge impact in that. So yeah, it's a challenge. I give you all the night, find somebody in your life that had a big impact to you in your formative years, track them down and write them a letter and just say, here's how I'm doing now. And you had a part in that. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll and, mean a lot. I mean, geez. And start to take the younger generation. And yeah, then you have to start doing it, right? Do the same thing. You have to start doing so, right, it. You know, like everybody, we, we, it's a half joke and everybody, you know, gives us a hard time about it. We're always <laughs> like, Hey, you're smart. You should be having kids. Right. Hmm. But really it's about, it's about pouring into people that way, right? Like I'm able to pour into my kids and, uh, and if you don't have kids, you should be able to, you should pour into other people. And even if you do have kids, you should be pouring into people who aren't just your kids. And so uh, it takes a village. It does. And it takes a lot of energy too, right? right? It's uh, it's not something that just, but it occurs. feels good. That's well, the thing. Like it's, it's really hard and it can be exhausting, Sure, but it's satisfying whenever you pour yourself into somebody, yeah. right? Or something. Outside yeah. of yourself. And we, get, and we get hurt too, right? You know, yeah, you, you are going to help people and you and your they, hopes up in them. They let which, you down. And they let you down. Yeah. Or they're, 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 they're people. Or they're not going to be, they're not going to thank you right. for it. There's this great uh, essay, I forgot the name, it's like from like the turn of the 20th century guy. He wrote an essay called, you, know, you have to have the courage to face ingratitude, right? right. And the, it's the courage just to go out and help somebody and don't, ex you know, they're not going to say There's, thank you. Yeah. And you have to have that courage to do that and return. expect nothing in return. Yeah. So it's a skill you have to develop. Well, because when you do that, you're not just refining one person. Right. You're being refined by the yeah, thing too. Right. right. And so, and that was kind of what I was talking about in my talk last night is don't just make your pursuits and strength about you, about hitting PRs. Cause that feels good. But if you really want to turbocharge that, like take that and apply it outside of yourself. Yeah. And don't I, you think that's the thing that sets us, <laughs> that really sets us apart from what other people are doing? I mean, look, there are lots of other groups especially kind of powerlifting groups who are strong. We're really, really strong. Right. right. But I don't think they've made the connection with what it does for all of these other facets of your life. Right. right. West sides not spend a lot of time with yeah, uh, Louis Simmons is like refining somebody's confidence. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, my favorite stories that come out of the community are the ones about, you know, I got stronger. So I was able to lift my adult son who's paralyzed out of bed. Sure. Or whatever those or I was able to fight for my marriage better. I was right. able to right, like we handled my kid got leukemia and we were able right. to fight it, you know, whatever those things are. And, and that's the thing, right? So getting a 16 year old kid strong, having it make the difference between him being a <laughs> starter on the football team or somebody on the bench is cool. Right. But there's not a lot of depth there, right? Yeah. Um, but to watch it change who he is and watch him go from a boy to a man is something else. Yeah. And watching what it does to my wife and watching what it does to my daughters and watching what it does to 82 year old Sybil. Those are the things that I, you know, it's not, it's not about strength. I mean, it, like strength is, it's huge. Obviously strength is the foundation of everything we do physically, man, it's so much more than that. Right. And so it's cool that once we've discovered that, 
it's far better than cool. Once we've discovered that, we've got to pass that along. It's yeah. too important no. not to. I agree. You guys feeling bold enough to do a little Q&A? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, I'll go get this mic and walk around. Okay, okay. we'll do it. All right, so we're going to do, we're going to take, we'll take some questions from the audience for Brett. What, hey, what was the thing while he's getting that? What was the catalyst that made you to decide to start Art of Manliness? Uh, what, I mean, here's, this is the story how it happened. Like, it's, like, it sounds just like those, you know, mythical startup stories. Like, it started in the garage and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What it was, I was in a Borders bookstore while I was in law school, taking a break from studying. And I was just browsing the men's magazines, right? The men's lifestyle section. I was looking at the headlines and I just realized on these magazines, like every month it's the same thing. Like articles on how to get six pack abs, yep. s- you know, sex positions you need to try yeah. tonight. How to get laid. How to get laid. How yeah, to do it right. Like the $4,000 sweater <laughs> right. you need this season. <laughs> and like the travel, like where you need to travel. And like when you're a broke law student, like that's not, it just doesn't like it, it's not a pos- it's not possible it's not attainable this is what didn't relate to it sure but they also just like this doesn't resonate it doesn't feel like what it means to be a man it's not just yeah. aesthetics and stuff besides like you know what how old were you i was 25 okay. 25 i mean i was young i mean it was pretty, I was, it was pretty bold to be like i'm 24 and i'm gonna start a blog about how to be a man well e- e- even to read those things and be like yeah, i mean you can read those and be like yeah like that's dumb and doesn't apply to me but to actually right. kind of understand there's these greater implications there. Right. And that there's a need for those things. Right. That if I'm thinking this, there's other got, there's people other people like, I don't, yeah, I never, yeah. And that's the thing. Like when I, as soon as I started it, I started getting immediate feedback and they're yeah. like, this is great. I've been looking for something like this for a long time. Yeah. So that's been, it's been a lot of fun just finding like-minded men, right? Yeah. They, you know, here's the thing with the art of man's, we do like the serious stuff, but we also do like fun stuff. Sure. Like you're going to find stuff like how to poop like a samurai. Yeah. On <laughs> the site. And, <laughs> and if, and, um, mm-hmm. or if you, you know, how to, how to gird up your loins, like an illustrated guide on that. And that's just like my personality, like literally, like, like li- literally gird up your loins. <laughs> okay. how they did it in the Bible. Right? Yeah, right. Um, um, that's just my personality. I, I like to have goofy, fun stuff. Yeah. But I also like, I, I like to hit serious stuff. Yeah, too. you do. Yeah. So it's cool. Are we on Scott? Yeah. So we'll do questions. We're gonna do questions. I don't have much cable here. So if anybody wants to ask any questions of anyone, questions for Brett, you can do it here. There we go. Come on up. Come on up here. Just stay behind that speaker, though. I'm curious. What was your uh, deadlift PR at your last meet? Sure. It was 574. Nice. So I'm getting close. I think I'll get 600 600 in October. For sure. 600 in October. And remember, that's with a BNR bar, which is the worst bar ever made for a deadlift. Right. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's a terrible bar for a deadlift. No, it's fine. It's just really hard. It's a 29 millimeter bar. He could pull 600 on a deadlift bar right now. Do you think so? Yeah. I'm cutting right now. Well, whatever. You know what I mean. Yeah. He said if we cutting. peaked you, you would still, you, you deadlift 600 with that. Yeah. What Any else? More? Yep. Come on over here. I can't bring it to you. You'll squeal. I'm an English teacher and I love your book reviews. Oh, so I was wondering what you're reading right now that you would recommend. What I'm reading right now. Okay. So um, fiction, I'm rereading Lonesome Dove. Oh my gosh. For like, this is my fourth time. <laughs> you wrecked me with that. Going through it. Um, and then for other fiction, I would recommend if you're looking fiction for men, the road mm. is another one by Cormac McCarthy. That's another one where I, that's one of those, I cry. Like yeah. that's, I read that once a year. It's a very happy family summer. Right. Loving sort of, I read it once a year, sort of like as my catharsis and I just, I'm sobbing. And then like, I, I hold my kids and I'm just yeah. like kissing them. Has there I, ever been a book that captures the love of a parent for a kid? Nothing like that, As man. much as the road does. Right, no. right? So, so that's another one. Um, what I'm reading, I'm always reading because of the podcast. So what am I reading? I'm reading, I'm reading a book about a Thoreau and sort of the culture that he grew up in. It was really weird by that time period in the New England. Like everyone was really into magic and fairies and like ghosts and astrology and it all intertwined with Christianity and out of this Thoreau kind of came up with his and Emerson the uh, transcendental movement where it's kind of kind of hippy dippy type stuff but it's just really interesting so I, that's been fun too the yeah. Grant book you sent me that you like the Grant it, right? yeah the Grant the biography was like, great yeah, Ulysses the, Grant like Ulysses that was Grant. great because I mean I think Grant is like super underrated everyone just remembers him as sort of this bumbling drunk yeah his administration riddled in in scandal but the guy had soul, like he had a lot of demons to battle and he battled them, I think successfully the best he could. And I mean, this is crazy. Like this is a guy, he, he like he was selling wood on the side of the, at a corner in St. Louis, cause he was so poor. 
and then he ends up being president of the United States That's a wild. couple of years later. Yeah. Like that could not happen no. today, but yeah. that sort of stuff happened yeah. back then. So yeah. it's a good one. You you got me reading fiction again. I, I had read fiction no. since I was in high school. And when you did your book signing in Tulsa, we came down, we were doing a training day that day. And you said, Hey, I'd really like you to come down to the book signing. Went down to the book signing. Somebody actually, I saw some of the guys in the room. Yeah, some book of them signing here, that yeah. day. And you talked about why it's important for men to read fiction. Yeah, right? most men are like, they're, they're more nonfiction type, right? Yeah, I um, love nonfiction. Yeah, I do, so you, you learn things, it's yep. practical, whatever. But like fiction is important for men because there's, hey, there's like psychological things going on. Like there's, when you read fiction, you have to engage your theory of mind, which is this, it's what you use to figure out what other people are thinking, right? Theory of mind is what allows you to have a conversation with yep. somebody. It, it's a, what allows you to figure out, well, he said that, but did he really mean what he said or like what's going on there? Yeah. So when you read fiction, it helps strengthen that. Yeah. But also I think just fiction, like we are storytelling animals. Like we love stories yeah. I and mean, fiction is sort of, it's virtual reality allows you to learn about ideas, concepts, battles of, you know, good and evil ethics, morality inside of a story. Mm -hmm. It's like virtual reality. Yeah. So you get, it's like a video game some safety there, but it allows right. you to take your mind in a place that it wouldn't normally go. Right. Especially if you're a guy that's wired a lot, like a lot of us are, it was very logical and systematic, which is great when it comes to logical sort of reasoning, but not great when it comes to creativity. So it lets my mind go to places that you otherwise wouldn't have gone yeah, to. I'm incapable and, and it allows that. those concepts to, I think even imprint in your brain better because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everyone remembers a story. You might not remember some logical argument, yep. right? But you can remember a story. Yep. Yeah. So last time I cried out loud, like actually made noise was reading Lonesome Dove. It's, it's and I'm, it, oh man. So I won't ruin it. So Who's, got some, who has, what does read, that sound like? Who's read Lonesome who's Dove? Who's read Lonesome Dove? Okay. Now listen, you don't understand how good it is. It is the best. You have to read you have Lonesome to read. Dove. It's like 800 pages long yeah, or something. Yeah, it's, it's maybe 1,200 pages. It's I don't, long. No, it's 900. Don't okay. exaggerate. Reynolds exaggeration. I know. It's like, I think it's like 900, but it reads really fast. Pages. And so. <laughs> you like, you feel like you're You don't friends. want to read it fast, by the right, way. Like, no. it's so good. But like, it reads fast. Like, yes. it doesn't feel oh, like you're yeah, like. You get lost in it and you read 120 pages and you didn't even realize you did it. But you get 500 pages in and you start getting depressed. Because you're like, the book is going to so come in to end soon. Right. We're not going to be able to handle it. That's this. why you reread it again so you can visit your friends <laughs> yeah, at Lonesome yeah, yeah. Dove. It's so good. No, it's good. It's great. And the miniseries is good too. So, All right. What's up, Brett? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good. My name is Ryan. I just downloaded your app, but I, I haven't checked out any of your stuff yet. But I, as I walked in, I heard you said you were from Edmond North High School. Yeah. Awesome, man. Me too. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Go Huskies. Go Huskies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what did you, what other sports did you play besides? Football. I just did football. Oh, nice. That was my thing. So, your, number, your number's not retired? You're not in the oh, Football Hall of Fame no, for Edmund? I was, I was like a mediocre <laughs> player. I, I finally started my senior year. I think it might have been a pity start. That's awesome. <laughs> my <laughs> entire career was pity start. <laughs> what year did you graduate? I graduated in 01. Oh, wow. Okay. Baby. I was on... I was on a, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, one's not I that long ago. Ago. I, I graduated in 09, so... Okay. I, I graduated in law school from 09, so... Cool. So did you play football? I actually wrestled. You wrestled? Okay. I, I North has a good wrestling program. Yeah, they do. Gives my uh, same Rick Bollenbach. Yeah, so Bollenbach. Yeah, I, I wrestled for him in like eighth grade. No way. Yeah, he's That's a good awesome. guy. Yeah, he's great. Well, cool, man. So, yeah. Other questions? Good, good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. You got one? Hey, so uh, you talk quite a bit about the refining power of doing hard things. Right. If you don't mind sharing, maybe can you think of a time where you had to have a conversation or approach a situation that... You really didn't want to have, but you feel like either mm. you or the other person or the other party benefited afterwards. Yeah. No, I mean, you have those a lot when you own a business because they come up, you, you know that, right? You have, to have this uncomfortable conversation. No idea. But like one really one that, that I can remember was, so I graduated. Here's how it worked. I started the art of manliness when I was in law school. By 2009, I was eking out enough where I could be like, I could live on this sort of and eat rice and beans. <laughs> you made eleven fifty a month. Something like, yeah. And so I, and I, I graduated in 09. I knew I didn't want to practice law because I, I, I interned and I decided this isn't for me. Like I'm not, this is just not what I'm going to do. And so Even I, after reading To Kill a Mockingbird. It, well, I guess that's law is not like that. Most <laughs> of law is you just read and write <laughs> so memos. Good, and yeah, it's really good. It's really good. So I had the decision to make, okay, I couldn't really support a family with the blog yet. I didn't want to waste three years of my life mm -hmm. that I just 
spent and lots of money. So I need to get a job in the legal field. So I worked for a company called Thompson Reuters. If you hire an attorney and your attorney needs to find out what the law is, they use Thompson Reuters or Westlaw. So I got a job teaching law students how to use Westlaw. It was a fantastic job. Got to work from home, paid well at 401k, health insurance. It was awesome. I got to a point where the site continued to grow, to get bigger and bigger. My, my first, my son was born. We had our second book going on and everything came to a head and I just, I couldn't do everything. And I had to make a decision. And then like, I did not want to have that conversation with my boss. Like I only worked there for like six months and say, Hey, I know you spent a lot of money training me, but I got to quit. I'm out. I'm out. To run an online, run an online business. Magazine. Right. <laughs> so I put it off and off and off. And finally I just did it. And boss was like completely supportive of it. And he said, no, I support that. It wasn't, that's the thing. Like the things you think are going to be really bad aren't as bad when you actually do them. Oh, the anxiety about the, it is Like you worse. just, you worry. It's like, what are they going to, what are they going to think? I'm, or that you start thinking like, I'm not, irrepla I'm, I'm irreplaceable. Yeah, I'm going right. to put them in such a I'm bind. It's like, in. there's a giant corporation. They yeah. don't care. Yeah. Like they you know, find someone else yeah. to put there. Uh, so that was one that, uh, that comes to mind. So that's our show. Thanks for listening. 